Hey guys, welcome back. Well, this is my second video in the series on my Iron Man Mark III build. If you didn't see my first video, there's a link up above here where you can catch it, where I'm talking about the Iron Man Mark III from Walsh 3D that I'm gonna be building. And in the first video, I kind of gave you a grand overview of what it is, what files, and how we're gonna do it. And in the second video, I wanted to kind of give you a shop tour. I've been doing this for a while, and I've, I've really never done a shop tour of my little well, my little man cave, my, my little bat cave, uh, you know, where the nerdiness happens. So this is kind of my little mini factory. I'm going to go through and show you uh, most of the machines. And again, this isn't a show and tell to say, look at all the printers I have, because it's, <laughs> you dream of having a lot of 3D printers. Uh, and then when you start upgrading them, it turns into a, well, a lot of fun. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to show you several of the machines that are going to be involved in the build with the Iron Man Mark III build. And most of these printers, almost none of my machines are stock. So uh, you may have some of these 3D printers. You may be interested in some of the upgrades I've done and why. So that's what I'm going to do. Are you ready? Here we go. Hey guys, welcome back. And first of all, I haven't told you my name. My name is Paul, and this is my channel where nerdy is cool. Obviously, the Iron Man Mark III build. I've done a lot of other cool builds. I mean, I've got an Illumina Mark II D2. I've got a Batman Dark Knight suit, Stormtrooper suit. I, I, I got, a, well, you can see around the background here, I got a lot of stuff going on. So if you've never seen my videos before, or you find me kind of interesting, hit the button down below. I would love to have you as a subscriber, and feel free to give me a like. That helps the algorithm. So here we go. So today I'm going to be kind of giving you the layout of the land here. Um, here at the uh, where Nerdy is Cool Global Headquarters, uh, I just wanted you to have a, a good impression of uh, what kind of, uh, I don't know, studio I have. So uh, uh, as you can see, it's nothing terribly fancy. Uh, you know, I got my kitchen table over here. Uh, I got the DSLR, I got uh, two other DSLRs and, uh, you know, the Amazon lighting. So, hey, you know, with a little bit of money, you too could be a YouTuber. So. That's the studio, and then the next things I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to get the GoPro set up here. We're going to put that in front of a bunch of the printers, and I'm going to give you a little rundown on what they are, what the capacity is, what tweaks I've made, and we'll move on from there. Are you ready? Okay, so the first of my fleet of 3D printers is my Creality CR10S 3D printers. I have three of these. One of them started off as a CR10, it was upgraded to a CR10S. The print volume on these are 300 by 300 by 400, and I have uh, the camera pointing at one of them right now, and I, I'll have some additional footage here for you. So <clears throat> let's talk about these. So one of the first things you're gonna notice is uh, I went direct drive. So this is featuring the Bontech DDS, it was called, direct drive system, and it has the Bontech extruder, and for the hot end, it has the E3D V6. And be all touch mount on the side. Okay, the new mount is in. It's an all-in-one solution. You you plug it in, you follow their instructions, and, and off you go. And this has worked extremely well. I like I said, I have three of these. Uh, I won't go over the enclosure setup. We'll cover that in a different video. But uh, you're also going to notice that the bed is a wham bam. It's the uh, spring steel with PEX, a magnetic surface. And on the bottom, uh, you can't really tell in this view here, I've gotten rid of the springs. I'm using solid spacers, so uh, we don't have to worry about that anymore. And like I said, with the print volume this has, and uh, with the E3D V6 hot end, uh, I have three, like I said, I mentioned I have three of them, and I have in the enclosure, I marked down exactly uh, what they're using for nozzle sizes to keep track of. So uh, one is using a 0.6, one is using a 0.8, and one is using a 0.6 nozzle X so it can use abrasive filament for my carbon fiber printing needs. Uh, these things have been excellent. The other thing that I've done is I've upgraded the electronics. I got rid of the noisy stock fans. I got rid of the stock power supplies. And I also upgraded the electronics to the, let's see, it's the Big Tree Tech uh, Mini E3 V3. There it is. It's got the 2209 drivers. And I also, while at it, I got rid of the stock touchscreen and put the new one on there. It's a TFT35, also from Big Tree Tech. And yeah, I think that's about it for the upgrades on this 3D printer. Again, with the print volume, it, it, it works great. And having three of these and having them configured differently has been excellent. And like I said, in the upgrades that I've done with the build surface uh, and the electronics and the direct drive system, it's been way more reliable than it was stock. So that's the first three. 
Okay, the next two machines, these are from Arion, and they have the exact same print volume as the CR-10S. And these are 300 by 300 by 400. And there's a Thinker S and there's a Thinker SE. The only difference when they showed up brand new was one came with a glass bed, a little cheaper, and one came with their own spring steel PEI surface. And I struggled with that surface for the longest time. I had to use glue stick, hairspray to make things stay on it. So that went away. And fortunately, it uses the exact same wham bam uh, spring you know, bed as the CR10s. So that was easy to buy more. And uh, if I ever need to steal a bed from one machine into another, there you go. So that was one big upgrade. Now you're gonna notice, uh, hey, the Bontech DDS is on these machines too. Now I did a two-part video series. I'm gonna float a little link up here to remind myself when I'm editing to add those. And uh, essentially what I did is the Arion, you know, they do two things that fascinate me. They don't use eccentric nuts. So if you get any kind of wobble, you can't adjust it. So that was a problem. And the other thing was their stock hot end, it was the cheapest hot end I've ever seen. It was, I'm trying to, it's kid friendly channel, right? So anyway, it was awful. The problem was, not only was it awful, but the thermo resistor, you know, it's not like most thermo resistor where it goes inside the heat block and it's held in place with a set screw. They didn't do that. They just stuck it in there and it was held in place with a silicone sock. And eventually over time, that silicone sock loosens up a bit, your thermo resistor moves around and it can throw you some really scary error messages. So getting that hot end off of there, I put a CR10 gantry, so that allowed me to put a CR10 upgrade system on there, and that's what the video shows. So with the Bontech DDS system, it's been working really good, and one machine has the E3D V6, and because E3D came out with their new Revo series, they came out with a Revo E3D V6. So one of these machines has that. So in short, that gives me the ability to very quickly using another Revo nozzle, I can pull out whatever's in there, put another one in and, and off I go. These machines have worked really well. Um, I haven't messed with the electronics because they're fine. I have, a, I have one that has a really noisy fan, so that, that's on my to-do list to fix shortly here. But these things have been great. I've done some really large prints and I've done a lot of my C3PO stuff on there. So they've been good. Next machine, CR10S Pro V2. Some of these start to get longer names as we go here. This is also a 300 by 300 by 400 machine. I know, see in a trend here. Uh, this machine came to me, it was a used machine. Uh, I got it very inexpensively and um, it came as a V1 and it had a proc sensor. And it worked okay stock, but I was encountering a lot of jamming. And this is something a lot of the stock Creality hot ends have. For whatever reason, it cooks. I don't know if it's the PTFE that came with this one. No, I'm sorry, this one came with uh, Capricorn. But over time, for whatever reason, the end of that tube, you know, where it goes to the hot end, uh, sometimes it gets cooked or shrinks or I, I don't know, but uh, it had to go. So what I did is I, I have a great relationship with Bontech. I reached out to them and I saw that they had an upgrade kit for the CR10S Pro, the DDX. So, and that's the newer version of what I have on these other machines. Now, there are a couple of phases you can go. You can either just put the DDX on there and kind of reuse some of the components. And initially I was gonna do that, but what I did is I decided to upgrade to the more powerful heater. So I kind of did a little custom thing. And there's a video I think over here talking about my upgrade um, putting the DDX with the copperhead. Also, there's also another video. If you have one of these machines where, and I'll float that over here as well again, and what I did is I quieted down this machine. So we upgraded it from the uh, V1 to the V2. That was part of it. But the other part was this thing had some really loud fans inside of it. And um, Tiny Machines offered what was called kind of a hush kit for it which is basically replacing the fan and the power supply and replacing two of the fans that cover the electronics board and uh, with Noctua's and they, they had some really good adapter kits as well too. So that was, uh, that was a great video and that was a uh, uh, very good upgrade to, to quiet this thing down. The tricky thing with this guy was also uh, when you're doing all these upgrades is trying to keep track of all the firmware and um, this machine has a nice way of when it does its leveling it saves it and you know, we all have that one 3D printer where every time we send a print to it, it just comes out great. That's this machine. Uh, with that DDX, and it has the copper head, and it has the, uh, the gamma nozzle in there, so uh, the PLA and other materials don't want to stick to the gamma nozzles. Uh, it's been a really great printer. Um, 
when I watch that first layer go down, I mean, it's, it's spot on. I don't have to mess with anything. It's, it's really well done. Some of the prints I've done, I can probably show off some time lapses over here. When I first got the files from DO3 for the Iron Man, I did a lot of the shoulder and arm and other pieces on this printer. Now with a 0.8 nozzle, I do a layer resolution of like 0.25 millimeter. And that's a pretty thin bead for a 0.8 nozzle, but this machine does it really, really well. So that's the CR10S Pro V2. Next machine. This is, and I'm gonna put a flag up here for the video, this is the newer real T-Rex M18S. I don't know where they come up with these names, but that's what it is. This was sent to me for free some time ago to review, and it was kind of like vaporware. Once it arrived, when I wrote back to the person about questions or inquiries, they're gone. <laughs> so what was interesting was, so this machine came out about three years ago, and then two years ago, uh, the Fucus Odin, uh, the printer that folds. Yeah, you unfold it, you bolt it, and, and that's it. Um, looked identical to it. So in that, in that video, I go into a little bit of the history there. So I don't want to go too deep in the weeds here on this video. But what I did, uh, you can see here, the uh, bed has been replaced with Wham Bam, and it uses the same exact size, 300 by 300 by 400 uh, build volume. And the electronics all had to go. When I was trying to work on firmware with my friend, we just kept on running into all kinds of issu issues with that Robin Nano, uh, the MKS LCD screen. It was just not working. So boom out it went so in went a skr 1.4 turbo discovered that well the turbo will fit in there but i have to cut holes in the case so i have access to the sd card and the usb plug so i can do auto print and, and flash the firmware so a lot of macgyvering happened there the real fun is trying to get the lgx and getting the <laughs> oh god i don't even know where to start here just to get something to mount on that gantry and that was a lot of work but What's on there now, this is all that matters, is this has the Bontech LGX, which is a phenomenally good extruder, combined with a slice engineering uh, mosquito, and it also has the Gamma Master nozzle, so PLA, other materials won't stick to it, so hey, one less thing to worry about, less stringing, and I think I have a 0.8 nozzle in there right now. As a result of all these changes, because sometimes you throw money at these things and wonder, oh boy, was this a bad idea? I could have bought a new printer for the amount of money I spent. This thing's been great. This thing's been really, really great. It was a real challenge with the hardware. It was a real challenge with the firmware, but this thing has been my tank. Actually, uh, if you've seen the previous video of my uh, Iron Man and the, some of the prints I've done already, uh, the back piece, the big helmet, it cranked that thing out in 12 hours and it did a great job. So again, I'm very lucky. This is another machine that, uh, again, 300 by 300 by 400. I seem to have a lot of those, but it did a great job. Next up, something bigger. This is the Lulzbot Taz Pro XT, and this machine has a build volume of 280 by 280 by 586. It's a tall fella. And this was sent to me by Lulzbot a while back, actually, uh, for a review and to check it out and see what I think. And overall, I've had pretty good experiences with this. I, like I said, I haven't finished my review on it. I'm still trying to solve a couple of firmware and some other weirdness I'm having with it. but. Overall, I mean, I've had some really good luck with this machine. It's very unique because, you know, it's not very big as far as X and Y go, but I mean, it can do super tall things. So some of the things that I've done, I've done videos on these, I've done shorts on these, where I've done things like, you know, arms and some leg pieces and some other. I've done some stuff with 3PO. Uh, it's, like I said, it's a pretty capable machine. Uh, what I have on it is I have what's called the M175 tool head on there. So what that means is that it's using 1.75 material and the uh, print head on it is the um, slice engineering mosquito. And what that gives me is the ability to use all those wonderful slice nozzles because a lot of the other tool heads that they had at the time were the uh, E3D Titan Aero types. And th th those have not been my favorite. Um, but like I said, with the M175, I'm using 1.75 millimeter filament. And with the uh, slice hot end, I mean, I, 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 I really know how to print with those. Those have been really great. The other thing with this machine has is it has a BL touch on there. So, and that's where I'm having some snags with the firmware. Um, you know, the, the first couple of tries, I had some issues with the mesh build. The more recent one was better, but now I'm having a few other little issues. So. Essentially, I need to have a phone call or a chat with, with one of the Lulzbot engineers and try to wrap my mind around what's ailing this thing. But 
overall, like I said, the prints that come off this thing have been really great. I mean, the surface, I've had no issues with bed adhesion, and it's a big fella. And you're gonna notice the enclosure here. Now, this enclosure, unfortunately, was not wide enough to fit it. Uh, I mean, it's a big printer, and I got this from 3D Upfitter, and they had a Taz Pro XT enclosure, and I got it over here, I put it all together, and it just is not quite big enough. It's probably about two or three inches shy, and I think from the version I have and their customer, what they have, there were some differences. So uh, on mine, on the outside, it has filament runout sensors, so it makes it a little bit wider. So that's probably the issue. Now, to their credit, because it didn't fit, they did give me a refund, which I greatly appreciate. Um, I don't know if I'll be able to repurpose this enclosure onto something else, but uh, I do want to put an enclosure around this printer because I firmly believe in having them enclosed to contain the temperature for the best possible results printing and also the safety aspect. I want to make sure all those nasty VOCs and nanoparticles are being captured by the filters. I don't, down here in the basement, it's about 60, 62 degrees, so it's not terrible conditions for printing, but I, I really want an enclosure to really run this thing to its max. Next up, these are, these are my smaller printers. I know, I know, you, you're more interested in the bigger ones, but let me explain why. So two of my better printers for doing really small parts have been, one's gonna be a surprise, and one's probably not a surprise. So the first one is the Ultimaker 2 Plus. I got my first 3D printer in 2013, and I got the Ultimaker original. And then like three weeks later, they came out with the Ultimaker 2. And I was so devastated I missed out on that because you couldn't return the kit. <laughs> I already had it together. And I, w I, I felt like I really missed the boat. So some years later, I was able to get one used through Fabricate. Thank you, Aaron and Simon, for giving me a great deal on that. And then upgraded it to the newest standard, the Ultimaker 2 Plus, which features the newer extruder and a better hot end and some other changes. And that thing has been really great. It's, it's, it's a workhorse, it's tank. I mean, it's, it's built to a different standard than what these other inexpensive machines are built to. Uh, as you can see, and I'll put a little tag up here, I've done some work on it. I have the Wham Bam uh, flexible bed system inside of there, and I also have the printed solid enclosure on top with a 3D upfitter filter attached to the back of it, and then I 3D printed a little, like kind of a bib piece here to kind of seal it up a bit, because I just wanted to make sure that I had it sealed up, which kind of helped dampen some of the noise, because uses the old driver, so she's kind of a noisy old girl. Um, and also for the safety aspect. And just enclosing it allowed me to uh, have the door in the front, allowed me to use other materials like ABS or some other higher temp materials and contain the heat and uh, you know get all the VOCs under control. It's been a really great machine. I have a Ruby nozzle I can stick in there if I want to use abrasives. Um, currently I have a 0.6 nozzle in there because I find with the 0.6 I can do some really great detail, but with the uh, uh, the wider bead, uh, I do walls quicker. So uh, that's a nice plus. So the machine that was a really big surprise, this was sent to me for review a while back. It's a Mingna Magician X2. It's like a sub $300 printer. When it showed up, when I took it out of the box, there was all kinds of really bad rattling sounds going inside the electronics bag. So I contacted the manufacturer and just said, you know, if you want, I'll send this back and you can send me one and I'll, I'll try again. Nope, nope, we know exactly what it is. Something wasn't quite glued in place, open it up, reattach it, and you're good to go. And they were right, it's, it's, it's been working pretty well. So with a machine at that budget, you know, I know I'm not getting the best components in the world, but it's done a surprisingly really good job on some of the really complicated prints I sent it. Some of the detail pieces, uh, you know, uh, I got, you know, some of these guys, you know, these, these have been pretty tough orientations to print these guys, and this printer has done a superb job with it. I just, I'm blown away. <laughs> you know, if, if you told me that the $250 printer was gonna do the prints that some of the other machines were struggling to do without issue, wouldn't have believed you. So the only changes I made to that machine were the spring where it has this direct drive, that, that, that spring does not compress at all. So I pulled that spring out and I took a spring from a Bontech direct drive and that made all the difference in the world on how that thing feeds. Uh, and again, outside of the weird bed leveling that works while you're running it, but, but not the next day, it's been fine. So, big surprise. Next up are the big, big 3D printers. Now, currently, none of these are up and running. However, 
The reason they're not running is because they're pending upgrades, just waiting for me to get to them. So one of the most popular questions I get is, what in the world is that big printer right behind you? So, and I can show you on the stream cam here, and I'll get some other footage. So that is the Fulgurtech FT6. That's a, a kit, and uh, this came out a couple years ago, and it's an interesting kit, and unfortunately they're no longer made, no longer supported, so you're really kind of on your own. There are still a few of these floating around, and the print volume on that, I'm just trying to review my notes, it's 720 by 350 by 450. And I have had it up and running and working. And some of the issues I had with this is this printer is made with ACM, aluminum composite material. So that's great sign material, but not exceptionally good 3D printer material. So structure wise, it's doing okay. But the biggest problem has been the bed, and I can kind of run my finger here. That part under here is just not very straight. And one of the things that I struggled with with this 3D printer kit was getting that bed level. And the other problem was that in the kit, the electronics, the quality of the PCBs that they offered were just not that great. And again, that was the nature of these kits. You're getting it really cheap and you're just, you know, you're not getting a bond tech, you're not getting slice engineering, you're not, you know, getting, you know, you know these, these brand name things. You're getting something that was bulk parts, <laughs> came from overseas and divvied up and here's your kit and off you go. So these machines have great potential. Now with this particular one, and let me go back to that camera. So the problem with a machine of this size, you have a big giant bed and you have an AC heater and you're in my shop where it's about between 60 and 62 degrees. So that bed heater is just throwing a tremendous amount of heat around and I'm going through a lot of energy trying to keep it going. I've had some insulation under it, but essentially right now there are two things going on with that. One of them is an enclosure. So I'm working on an enclosure, not only to, of course, you know, the safety aspect, but I want to be able to contain all that heat um, because I just hate running that giant heater and basically heating my basement. <laughs> I need that heat to stay inside the printer. Uh, the next thing is that bed is being replaced. There is a gentleman by the name of 713 Maker. He does a lot of upgrades for Vorons, I think Rat Rig as well. But of course, the FT5 and FT6 are other printers that he offers upgrades. Uh, kits for and I do have one of his one-piece beds and uh, That should allow me to have an exceptionally flat surface. I just got to pull that bed out put the new one in um, There's a few other little things that need to be changed on this machine But again with the size of that bed during the pandemic I had all kinds of requests for those uh, You know the ear band savers, you know You would you strap the mask to the back of this little plastic piece instead of hanging on your ears and digging into you I mean, I printed hundreds of those on that 3D printer. And print quality wise, it's done a great job. There was a lot of complications getting the electronics happy. Um, it currently has an SKR 1.4 in there and it's running what's called Duet SKR. There's a little plug-in board in there. So it's running RepRap. So any changes of the firmware, boom, 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 I change it through the web interface, boom, reboot, off I go. It's not like Marlin where I gotta recompile, check for errors and, and that sort of thing. So. The, pr the printer has great potential. Now, on there for a hot end, uh, I have the E3D Hamera, and uh, since that's been on there, they offer the Revo, so I have the upgrade kit to install there too. So, I'm looking forward to doing really large parts for Iron Man on that, uh, because that will give me some, you know, much bigger, you know, print volume, you know, being, you know, my goodness, you know, 720 by 350 by, you know, 400. So, it's, it's a good printer, it's been up and running, it just needs a few tweaks to run more reliably. Time for the big guys. So I have a couple printers here that are pretty big and they are just pending some construction. So right here, <laughs> over on this side, uh, I'll give you a view here, are the Creality CR10S500. These have been around for quite some time. This is a very popular printer. Uh, I know some of the clubs I hang out with, especially like the folks at 3D Print R2D2s and other clubs, very popular machine because if you get them dialed in, they work really well. Some people are, some people have been really lucky. Stock, they have no issues, off they go. Some people really struggle to get these things to level the bed and work right. So both of these machines, uh, one has a DDS already attached to it, uh, one still has a stock hot end. So let me explain what I'm doing and why. So what I've done so far is I've already replaced the glass beds with wham-bam because 
clearly you've heard from the video, I have really good luck with that surface. Um, for hot end, we're going to be changing out the stock hot end and we're going to remove that DDS on the other one. But that's going to be going with a Bontech DDX. We're going to go with a slice uh, mosquito hot end and we'll probably use a 0.8 nozzle because we're dealing with a giant printer. And then we're going to work our way to the control box and we're going to get rid of all the old electronics. Those are all going to come out. Now the CR10S500 is a 12 volt system. Now the beds are AC, so that's good there. And we have a couple of precautions we're going to take with that, but I'll come back to that. So the power supply has to come out, the screen and the electronics will come out, and going in, a couple things. So we have, just like I have on my other CR10s, we have a new touch screen going in. We have a 24 volt power supply, so we have to make some changes to make sure we're 24 volt all around. Um, as far as the board, I was going to put the SKR Mini E3 in there, but one of the things that was suggested to me is because it's such a big bed, is you really want to have independent Z motor control, and that will really help with the whole leveling process, but some of the things you can do with Marlin. So each of these machines will be, will be getting the SKR3, because uh, that allows you to use the E1 plug, uh, which would usually be for a second extruder, but in this case, firmware-wise, we're going to change that. So uh, one of the Z motors goes over there. So, so that's the gist of it. The other things that I have on the bed, I'm looking over here because that's where they are. Uh, I'm trying to remember what else I have. I have the Z brace kit, so that will tighten things up. I have an enclosure from, and this, this was a lot of money, but I have a giant enclosure. And for one of them, I need to get another one from 3D Outfitters. It's the CR10 S5 enclosure. Um, it does have the ports in the back, so I can either use one of his carburetor filters or I can plug in a BOFA 3D Print Clean um, and attach that uh, to it as well. Now, let me circle back to, since these are gonna be inside enclosures and the AC bed uses a solid state relay, um, currently they're attached to the frame. And in talking to some people that are really good with electronics, they're like, yeah, that's probably not the best spot for them. So. It looks like a giant block of aluminum, but these are enclosure rated, you know, uh, solid state relay uh, coolers. So the SSR will come off the side of the printer. It's gonna sit on this giant aluminum block, uh, which has a 24 volt fan blowing air over it. So there's less risk of the SSR doing something very bad. Let's just stay there. Uh, so that's the plan. So I have just about everything I need for this upgrade. The only other thing I need is I need to order the SKR3 and the, uh, the 2209 drivers that I need for it. Once I have those parts and components, then I can move them over to the shop table here and make a project video on upgrading these things. So that's gonna be a lot of fun. And again, at 500 by 500 by 500, I mean, things like the chest pieces and other bigger parts of Iron Man, like the back and, and others, will be able to be done in one shot rather than breaking them up into little pieces. So that's going to be very exciting. Next up, I have a, well, I got this from uh, Anycubic as a Amazon return. They sent it to me uh, very inexpensively and they said, hey, this was a return. You know, we'll give you a deal on it. If there are any issues, we'll cover it. Just let us know. I received the printer. I identified a lot of issues, a lot of parts that were jammed and just unusable. And uh, when I put in my request to have those, parts and other pieces are replaced. They said, you know what? Keep the printer. <laughs> so, and that's my experience with any cubic. So as I got into this thing and as I watched TH3D's videos on their experience with their Chiron and noticing all kinds of really iffy decisions on the electronics and the components, uh, I've done a complete teardown of the machine. I've done a lot of uh, changes along the way that uh, Tim suggested in his videos. I got rid of the stock power supply. I have a new Meanwell power supply going in there. Uh, I special ordered from Kinovo a new AC uh, uh, bed heater uh, for this thing. Um, i trying to think, I'm still waiting for that to show up. I'll need to put a new bed in it. Like my other machines, uh, I, I junked the hot end. I'm gonna put a DDX with a slice engineering mosquito on there. So it's gonna be an excellent printer. I just have to get all the parts and components. And again, with a build volume of 400 by 400 by 450, you know, it can do some of the things that, you know, that, you know some of these machines that 300 by 300 400 can't do, but this is my next stuff up before going to the CR10 S 500s. So I like the idea that, you know, I kind of have that step up there. Yeah, they're all bed slingers, but I print slow. I'm not worried about that. I like to print for really great detail. And I mean, if they take a, a bunch of extra hours or an extra day to run, but they give me excellent quality, I'm cool with that. 
Now the rub is that in planning the video for that Kyron upgrade, which I've been doing all kinds of video clips, capturing everything I've done, I thought, wouldn't it be fun to compare what I have to a stock one? So I bought a stock one, <laughs> used, and uh, when I got it and put it together, man, <laughs> troubles, troubles, troubles. Uh, so basically what I got is largely unusable, and that's putting it kindly. Uh, I won't go into any great details because I, I kind of covered that in my uh, buying used 3D printers, which you can see right here. So basically it boils down to once I get that one upgraded and any kind of struggles I run into, I can apply to the other one. So there you go. Intended on having one, now I got two. In the next video, I'm gonna be talking about enclosures. And we're talking about enclosures for two things, safety, and also when you enclose your 3D prints, you get way better printers because you're controlling that environment. We're also gonna to touch on fire safety and you know a couple things you can do to protect yourself and your print. Uh, battery backups, air filtration, fire safety, fire suppression devices. So that's gonna be coming up in the next video. If you're wondering what I'm up to, check out my social media. I'm on Instagram, I'm on Facebook, I'm on X, and of course I'm here on YouTube. So check out those links to see what I'm up to. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Let me know your comments down below. I would love it if you subscribe and like, and remember, please print safe. Hey guys, welcome back. Well, in the last video, I gave you the intro I just can't catch a break tonight. I guess we're taking a break during the video here because you won't stop meowing. Can I do the next part of this video? Are you going to hang out? Okay. <laughs> See you, bye. Five, four, three, two. Okay, the next two printers are from uh, five, four, three, two. That's one of the things that's, oh look, high traffic zone cats. Uh, <laughs> don't mind. So one of the things with uh, this printer is it prints very big. And if you're gonna print very big, you're gonna print for a long time. So it, I, in my opinion,